Hi everyone, I'm John Schroeder and I manage ABB Ability for Pulp and Paper. What I'm going to talk about today is ABB Ability Collaborative Operations. First question is, what is ABB Ability Collaborative Operations? Well, it really consists of a couple of things. Um, first is that the technology that we think of when we think of Industry 4.0 or we, we think of the Industry Internet of Things, there's new technology that's available. And that's what ABB is, is leveraging to uh, provide a new portfolio of solutions. Second part of ABB Ability Collaborative Operations is the way that we collect data, pull it into our ability system, and then create knowledge from that. So by leveraging the technology and the data, and the third part of it is to leverage the expertise to get some action from that data, either through people or through automation. So we've really tried to make this pragmatic, and there are four different areas that we focus on. One is the availability. The second part is the, the performance, so the performance or production of, of a paper machine or a pulp mill. Third is the, the quality, so we're talking about the, the, the variability in, in the sheet itself. And then the fourth is, is the cost. How do we produce at the lowest cost? First one I'm going to touch upon is availability. And the example I'll provide is the, the QCS, or the quality control system. So a, a simple example, and what I'm showing here is we, I'm showing four different columns. The first column represents some key indicators of the health of the scanner itself. The second column indicates some key parameters for the health of a weight sensor. And the third, the, the health of a moisture sensor. And the fourth column then is some health specifics around a brightness sensor. Um, just a couple of, of, of easy examples or simple examples. If you look at the first column, the column on the left, and you see the third trend plot on the bottom, you'll see that there are a few dots that are below the red line. And what that indicates is that the temperature of the scanner, which is actually really important for the accuracy of the sensors, has fallen below the line. And, and what we do with that is one, we uh, alert, we have automatic al alerting, but also we're able to uh, compare that. If you look at the, the, the plot just above it, you can see green dots that, at, that go up. And that represents the gap of the, the sensors, the, the lower and the, the higher sensor gauge. That gap is uh, very important. So what that's really showing is that when the temperature drops, the gap changes. So that's something that, that's an indicator that we need to either take action from an ABB ability point, ABB point of view, or from a, a site point of view. If I move on and talk about um, a performance indicator, one of these would be sheet break. Now there's a lot of talk in the industry, a lot of buzz about uh, predicting sheet breaks. Well, maybe that'll occur someday, but, but what we're really focused on here and what we've created solutions around is one, how to reduce the time of a sheet break and also how to minimize the number of sheet breaks. So the first thing that, that I'll talk about is, is how to reduce the time. And what I'm showing here is, is a plot where we're, we've actually created a, a model to calculate the, the weight. And we calculate the weight during a, a, a sheet break. And you may wonder initially, well, why is that important? Well, during a sheet break, we of course don't have the online uh, capability to measure weight. So in, in sheet breaks is often one of the biggest times when the weight actually drifts. So by measuring and then controlling weight during the sheet break, we're able to help with the threading part because if the weight changes during the sheet break, it's harder to thread the machine. But also when the sheet gets on the reel, we're able to um, since we're coming on at close to the target, we're able to get back to on-spec paper much more quickly. So another aspect is the root cause analysis. So we are pulling in all of this data into the ability system. And we do leverage the analytics tools then to, to be able to troubleshoot and diagnose what is causing these sheet breaks. And that way we were able to reduce the number of sheet breaks. Another area that um, I want to just briefly talk about are grade changes. So from a grade change point of view, I really think of a grade change in three different parts. There's the beginning part where, say, an operator um, starts the grade change to the time that the, the, the targets actually start to change. There's a transport delay time there. And that's what I'm indicating between the, the first and the second line. Between the second and the third line is when the transition actually starts, but the paper's still on spec. So it's actually good paper um, even, even when the transition starts because you can see on the trend, there is a off spec line. So until it gets off spec, the, the paper is actually good. And then the transition happens, and then we get to 
the fourth vertical line. And the fourth vertical line is actually where the paper for the first time is on spec on the new grade. And then the transition continues till it gets to the target. And then the finally the last line is where the real turnip has occurred and the paper is actually considered to be on grade. During all of this time, paper is, is called or, or rejected. And actually a lot of the paper is good paper. And so if you look at the plot to the right, you can see a red dot and the red dot indicates how now we're using analytics and can use analytics based on the data that we're collecting to precisely calculate all of the good paper that's possible. And based on that spot, we can back calculate when the grade change should be optimized to start to minimize the amount of paper that's of good paper that's lost. Second part of that is the, the trend line or the transition. There we can optimize because again, we're, we're monitoring and pulling in the information. We're able to optimize that grade change, not only initially, but we're able to keep it optimized. And then finally at the end, we're able to alert the operator when that paper is on spec and get it considered to be on grade for the new grade as soon as possible. The next item that I'd like to just touch upon is from a quality perspective. And the first is, is control loops. I mean, there are, control loops are all over um, in the paper process, both on the paper machine and in, and in the pulp mill. So what we're doing here is we're, we're pulling in the information um, from the control loops and we're able to, based on our analytics then, assess what loops have not only problems, but the severity of the problems based on the impact of the process as well as the type of problem. Is it a process problem? Is it a valve problem? Or is it a signal problem? So based on all of this, we can provide um, not only guidance, but we can actually implement uh, tuning and, and improvements to the loops themselves. The next area to um, focus, staying on the, the quality topic, is variability in the sheet itself. And there what we're doing is we are performing analytics on the MD and the CD, the higher level controls. And we created KPIs around this to alert us uh, when the, the actual variability is starting not to drift toward the out of spec limit, but beyond what the expected performance is. And that's what's being indicated on the screen. If you look at the second plot to the right on the top row, you can see how the KPI increases. That alerts us that the control performance is starting to drift out of the normal range and allows us to take additional action, which is to perform more analytics to determine and diagnose what kind of frequencies of variation are causing that variability, which allows us then to, to um, direct us toward what the problem is and solve the problem. So finally, one last area that I'd like to touch upon are the costs and, and what we're doing to, to help reduce costs. In this case, I'm giving an example of, of how we are leveraging both advanced analytics and advanced control. So in this case, it's an example of where we're uh, modeling strength. So we're, we're pulling in data, and what we've done is we've, we've used some fairly advanced techniques to filter the data and calculate the strength of the paper in two different ways. One based on lab data, and another based on the actual process variables. By doing that, we get three points and we're able to come up with a much more robust way to, to calculate the strength. Once we have the, the calculation, we've also created um, advanced algorithms to not only control the, the target, but to control the target in such a way that the set points of the least costly handles or the, the mechanisms that control that strength are optimized the most. So in other words, for example, rush drag is, is leveraged as much as possible, and the, the fiber of the pa paper, which is the most costly, is the last thing that we try to adjust. And this is all built into the control algorithm. By doing that, we're able to optimize the, the overall cost of the paper while maintaining the strength of the paper. So these are just some examples. Um, and what I'm showing now is a, is a high level overview of the, the infrastructure. And what we do here is we use the same ABB ability infrastructure and based on the solution that we have, we pull in the needed data. And that ability infrastructure once in place can be, can be used for more and more solutions. So it's a very easy way to, to start with one or two solutions and continue to build on it. 
So finally, just to summarize, I, I touched upon this in the beginning, but there are several components that, that really come into this. One, yes, is the technology. And, and a lot of times that's always the focus is all oh, we have this, this buzz about uh, Industry 4.0 and all the technology, which is great. But the technology alone is, is not really where you're gonna get the value from. There are other components. The first is the, the analysis. It takes a lot of expertise to uh, know what data to analyze, know how to filter it, and know what tools to use to, to do the analysis. Second part is the, is the automation. So how do you take action? Certainly people can take action, but in, in today's world, everyone is stressed for time. The more automation can be leveraged, the better. And then finally, the expertise. I keep uh, touching upon this. We have a lot of neat technologies, a lot of powerful technologies, but without the expertise, um, a lot of these technologies just really don't meet their, their full value potential. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Uh, my name is John Schroeder. Thank you very much.